So for those of you following the Mike Bickle story at IHOP, Dr. Brown addresses it on his show today, and he gets the wrong caller, boy. The guy just repeatedly keeps saying, third-party investigation now. At what point in time will you say is enough, is enough? All right, but Michael, I, I just, yeah. hang on, hang on. Why do you have the tone you have towards me? It's no, antagonistic. I, I, you sound antagonistic. I'm, I don't think I'm antagonistic. I'm just saying... Are you sure, you're sure you don't mean anything? Because it feels like you're kind of like coming against me and challenging me. So let's get into it today. We're going to take a look at the phone call from the Dr. Michael Brown show today. And this was a tense phone call. I shortened it down to about four minutes. So we're going to take a look at that in a minute. But I think that the caller pointed to things that we're all thinking right now. But maybe people aren't saying out loud. Why hasn't a third party been brought in to handle this investigation yet? And why has it taken so long for them to do so? This leadership team shouldn't be handling this situation at all. They are all close friends with Mike Bickle. This caller gets right to the heart of the issue. I live in New York City. And if this team tried to do what they're doing from where I'm from, people speak their minds, they're impatient, and they're not afraid to call you out if something looks like it's going on the wrong way or people are being gaslit. Now we should handle things differently in our new family, the family of Jesus. And Michael, Dr. Michael Brown put on a clinic about how to have a really difficult conversation, but keep your cool and not fall, falling into dirty fighting tactics. I really admired this about Dr. Michael Brown because he knows how to have these tough conversations and keep composure. But this caller went right after Michael Brown, repeatedly saying firmly, third party investigation now no more gaslighting no more excuses and i know what ihop was thinking let's do a in preliminary investigation first and see what the the credit of the the details are and let's get gauge it and then take it from there but that would be like getting to a murder scene first and then getting your first crack at the crime scene but in new york city when this happens because there's a lot of crime here the cops put yellow tape around everything first once there's a crime committed. And you're not allowed to go anywhere near the crime scene, even if it's your house. Why? Because they don't want anything tampered with. They need to conduct an investigation, and they don't want anything being changed with the evidence. So them handling the first stages of the investigation with a local law firm who is an IHOP member and friends with the executive team it just really wasn't a good idea. Again, I'm not sure what they were thinking. I'm puzzled. An open-ended question. I'm not judging here, but I'm just puzzled. You can hear how frustrated this caller is, and rightfully so. He asked all the right questions. This guy would fit in in New York City right away. I know in other states they're a bit slower because I lived in Oklahoma for a while. So let's get into the clip and hear what Dr. Michael Brown has to say in defense Hi, Dr. Brown. Uh, my question is this. You said that you recommend bringing in guideposts to, to do the third-party unbiased uh, investigation, and IHOP has already indicated that they think some of the or many of the allegations don't have credibility. At this point, isn't the best thing for them to call in guideposts because if they don't have credibility, then it will completely vindicate their position. So why not not wait six months, not wait two years, call them now and say, hey, now's the time to not dance around it and bring in guideposts. Yeah, hopefully that'll happen. Uh, from day one when I got there, they said, hey, if it's if it's helpful to bring in a third party beyond this, then we'll we'll do it. Uh, so I'm, I'm still encouraging them to. I, again, I'm not, I, I stepped away because of schedule and, and inability to be involved as needed. But have you called them and say, hey, now's the time. To well, I've, I've, encour yeah, I've, en I've encouraged them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Strongly encouraged that. Said it's still the best way to go. And even if uh, what your lawyer is finding out is true, uh, many people won't believe it or feel it wasn't right coming through a law firm. So let's bring in someone like that. But 100%, sir, I did that in the last well, why conversation. Won't they to you then? Why won't they listen to your advice then? Oh, the, they may. The big accusation is from, from those that would be critical. It's not for you to determine which allegations are real and then to present those 
to Come guideposts. On. It's up to guideposts or some other group to determine what's real or not. And like I said, no matter how sincere they are in it, that's the way it's going to play out publicly. So that's my strong encouragement. I strongly encourage that. I feel it's the best, cleanest way. If not for certain history with Grace or conflict of interest, then Grace would have been the one. So guideposts, again, I don't know the groups that do but this. Grace, Grace said that they never even received any contact from IHOP. So, so that yeah, well, I, actually, so I was told. You're right. I was told the opposite. Ouch. I was told they re, they. Uh, I was given the day when they called and left an email, and I said, you know, I knew that. I was told that going in, there was a conflict of interest. That's why I recommended guideposts. Okay, well, if uh, it goes longer and longer, you know, weeks and months, and they still never bring in the third party, at what point will you say, okay, enough is enough? Well, well, hang on, Michael. Here's the question for you: Who yeah. am I? In other words, what, what's my role? Who who appointed me well, you, to do anything here? Well, they called you in. So oh, right. <laughs> As an advisor, but I'm no longer an advisor. I stepped away. I gave them my strong advice to do the very thing you're suggesting. As a faithful saint to the body of Christ, is there a point in time, let's say, I don't know, weeks, months, years, at what point in time will you say is enough, is enough? Right, but Michael, I, I, I just, <laughs> hang on, hang on. Why do you have the tone you have towards me? It, it's no, antagonistic. You sound antagonistic. I'm, I don't think I'm antagonistic. I'm just saying. Are you sure, you're sure you're you don't mean right? anything? It, because it feels like you're kind of like coming against me and challenging me. Whereas I've been, <laughs> no, I've been advocating okay. in the strongest ways I know to do the very thing that you said from day one. Yes. All right, so yes, it, it feels, oh, okay. But now, my question now is about the timing. Because you seem to be okay that they haven't done it yet. Yeah. So my question is, at what point? Uh, okay, I'm but Michael, you're, you're missing. All right, so let, me, let me try to help you here. I'm not involved in the investigation. My call is to bring in guideposts now or a group like that to do it already. So that's my call. I'm not waiting. That has been my call. I can't say anything beyond that. In fact, there continue to be a group of people saying they have serious allegations. And IHOP KC says... We've looked into them and we dismiss them based on our own findings and we're not bringing in someone else. I would say that's a mistake right up front. I'll tell you that up front. I don't need to wait six months. Okay. But if you have a situation, sir, which is what you're saying, that there will be five, 10, however many allegations saying we still bring these, we still have accusation. And IHOP KC says, hey, our lawyers say there's nothing to it or the external law firm says there's nothing to it, we're going to let it die there. I think that's a mistake. As long as you have this thing open and this big and it's not resolved privately, then by all means, they made a mistake if they don't bring in guideposts. So that's, I didn't say that now. I don't need to wait another day. What I want you to know and I want everyone to know was that was my very, very strong advice. The last conversation we had. Okay, you're calling for them now. Good. I agree with you. Then. Right. That's but nice. like I said, I caught that was, I did that. I, I been trying to say that with all with all respect, sir. That is ex exactly what I said when I came in. And then they said, hey, if we need to bring in the third party, we're not against it. That's what they've said throughout. Process by which they've done it through an attorney. I don't think it's the best process, but I understand why. I just don't think it was the best process. So that was my advice coming in. But my last strong advice was, no matter what your attorney finds, you still need to bring in guideposts to say, hey, externally, here's our investigation. And everyone having a setting that feels completely safe where they don't have to worry, I'm talking to an attorney, etc. So that has been my counsel, remains my counsel. Hey, thank you for the call. Okay, so you see in there, you know, even Dr. Michael Brown is puzzled here a little bit, like, well, I gave them the advice, but they didn't take any of it. So right from the beginning, he advised them, bring in a third party investigation ministry like grace or guidepost not a law firm okay and it seems like they did the exact opposite of what he's advising so no wonder dr michael brown isn't involved in the situation at all although they do need lawyers they can't use grace because grace is representing one of the victims but then use guidepost. So you can tell the caller is very frustrated and keeps, he's aminate in when are we going to see this? When? At what point should we say third party investigation now? And rightfully so. And then he asks them, how come they're not taking your advice? How come they're not doing what you told them to do? And Dr. Michael Brown is like, this is all I can say. I told them what to do and they didn't follow any of my advice. Good question on the behalf of the caller. So therefore, after a few weeks, they still haven't done what Dr. Michael Brown suggested. I know, like I said, down in Kansas, they might be a little slower, but I'm puzzled. Okay, so I'm leaving this as an open-ended question, not a judgment. I'm puzzled. Hopefully, this is their next step, and they'll get around to it at some point. But I'm with the caller. Where is the third-party investigation? So you hear Dr. Michael Brown say, well, you can't 
you can't release certain information. But now is the time for everybody to hold IHOP's feet to the fire and really say what this caller is doing, third-party investigation, now. It can't be delayed anymore. And the executive leadership team should not be involved in this situation at all. It's a major conflict of interest. And of course, you have to have lawyers, but they shouldn't be leading the investigation. A ministry should be leading the investigation. So if you're IHOP, you should be putting pressure on the leadership team, write letters, call them up. Those that are closest to them probably will have the most influence. We want to see a third party now. We want to see a third party investigation now. This executive leadership team should not have been involved in the process and they should completely get out of the way once Guidepost gets involved. So this is so people can feel confident in the investigation, that they can feel the investigation is credible and untainted with, that this process wasn't tampered with in any way. So again, that's it for today. I thought this was a great show clip from Dr. Michael Brown, and it seems like they didn't really take his advice. So for right now, I'm just puzzled, and for people down at IHOP, you need to just be putting pressure on the situation. Thank you for listening today. Be blessed.